Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Victoria 3, my new favorite game. And we are having a good time playing as Japan, and we have just unlocked the ability to make railroads, which will allow us to massively increase the power of Kyoto. If we take a m moment here and look at our national GDP, Kansai is already, um, what is it, 27.9% of our GDP. Like, an insane, an insane amount of our economy is concentrated here. Ooh, an opportunity to weaken the shogunate. Excellent. So we're in the middle of an election as well. But yeah, like the insane, insane, insane amount, amount of our GDP is coming from here. And that will only increase as we build railways and continue to concentrate industry in our capital um, in a bid to try to make a, uh, a very, very powerful state. So how is the election coming along? Yeah, it looks like the Constitutional Reform Party is still holding together pretty well. They're going to get 66% of the votes. They have really good momentum. Lots of party affiliation. The... Peasants are a little bit upset about the Constitutional Reform Party, um, but if we can get serfdom passed, they will, um, they'll probably leave the Constitutional Reform Party because their affiliation is starting to slowly fall away. 20% conscriptable battalions, excellent. So we can now conscript a larger per percentage of our population. Oh, did the first railway finish? <gasps> Huge, okay, so massive. So now we've passed professional army. This is gonna be perhaps a trigger for us to consider um, a war. Now we can build barracks up to 100 level. Conscription centers are max level 50 and we get a 1% conscription rate. So we don't want to rely on conscription. What we want to do... Now, there is an argument to be made that conscription is better for us because we don't want... Basically, conscription centers activate only when you're at war and you activate conscription. They're temporary buildings. Barracks is a permanent military that you permanently have to pay for. But the big upside of barracks is that it provides you with this right here, power projection. Power projection, and it's also a professional military that you're always ready for. If you are always raising and lowering your troops, that means your arms industry is going to either need to be subsidized or it's going to be, you know, activating and deactivating. You'll need to spin up your arms industry when you spin up your conscription and then spin it down. Whereas if you have a standing professional army, your army is just always ready to go. Your arms industry is always chooching along, churning up resources. So arms industries and military are another way, like construction, for us to feed state taxes back into the economy, while also giving us political, economic, and military power on the battlefield. We probably, around 1860, will start considering going to war with some of these countries to see if we can't make them into tributes, tributaries or vassals. This will allow us to essentially steal some of their national GDP, their national tax revenue, and convert it into our own coffers, which we can then use to further improve our economy. But yeah, I have a period of about five years here where I'm going to spend a little bit of time just building up my own economy. Um, the fact that we have our very first railroad, by the way, means that we are now producing the transportation resource. This is an incredibly, incredibly in-demand resource because it's brand new and fresh and every pop wants to buy some of it. This is essentially the people saying, hey, we want to move around and now they're buying it. So it's a way, it's a consumption-based resource, right? Uh, but it's also used in certain buildings. So we want to build this up because it's really, really expensive. If you're trying to optimize your GDP, it's generally a good idea to increase the total production chain of all of your buildings, like the number of buildings that are interconnected and rely on each other, and then to also build buildings that um, lower the cost of goods. So the constitutional reform, uh, in the sense that build buildings that produce the resource, that's incredibly expensive, right? That's a simpler way to say that. So the constitutional reform party one, do I want to reform my government at all? No, I think I'm pretty happy with this. We probably don't need the samurai anymore. It would be nice to change our trade laws. I think the big thing now is to maybe give it a go to try and get rid of serfdom. This will radicalize the samurai, but they're also really happy from what we just did. So it'll only radicalize the shogunate. So we'll see how this works out. We have a 49% chance. It's a 50-50 dice roll as to whether or not we can succeed here. I'm going to go ahead and prioritize making an arms industry in the capital. And then also some barracks here. Why is that? Because we're going to need an activated and upgraded military potentially if there's going to be a rebellion by the uh, ruling class. Cool. So there's a bit of a Japanese migration event targeting Sakhalin. So you can see here, the Japanese now make up a majority of the population here, which is potentially an argument to start maybe considering incorporating this state. It's mostly just good for livestock ranches, but it will eventually be useful. Like it's got coal mines, it's got iron mines, it's got whaling stations, fishing stations. It's not a terrible province at all, to be honest with you. So yeah, we want to build our arms industries and our military and our capital state, because I'm pretty sure, unless I decide to be a member of the rebellion, our arms, we, we always get to keep our capital state, essentially, right? So by having a very strong and powerful military in the capital state, ideally, potentially uh, consuming small arms and small goods to be stronger, potentially consuming mobile artillery to be even more stronger, you know, and then the power projection as well, I believe, yeah, power projection 
will improve your prestige and prestige is sort of like the ranking of countries in the world. I'm not sure what gameplay effect prestige has. That's something I'm not entirely sure about, um, but I'm sure it has some sort of effect. Yeah, our standard of living is way below most of the people, but that's probably because we're running a much bigger um, tax rate than most other countries. Oh yeah, look at that GDP shoot up. So this is just kind of like the consequence of setting yourself up for success. Yes, my GDP growth early was a little bit slow, but now we're going to see what is hopefully explosive growth in basically every category. Unfortunately, we can't get an alliance with Great Britain. That would actually make our lives so much easier because then we could use Great Britain to force recognition by declaring war on someone else. Looks like Russia and Prussia are at war. Uh, what is the cause of this war? Prussia just spends like all game at war, it feels like. Let's see, so this is a Prussian war against Bavaria. Russia has come in on the side of Bavaria. Ah, Prussia is trying to conquer Bavaria and open the Austrian market. How are you opening? Did you already beat Austria? <gasps> ah, it's invalid either because you've already beaten Austria or because something else. Austria already enacted free trade, so maybe it's not relevant. Um, so they want to liberate Saxony and Hoz Hohenzollern. Interesting, so... This could be the make or break moment for Prussia, whether or not they find themselves either becoming Germany or getting kicked back to the curb. This could be the moment. Let's have a look at the military battles. How are they doing on, on the field of battle? They're winning. Yeah, generally they're winning. They have pretty good defense and offense and they seem to be doing okay. Pretty successful Germany game, I would say. And Germany is a very fun nation um, because like everything that's true about Vic, like the game is called Victoria and about Victoria 3. But really, I would say that Germany is probably like one of the most emblematic nations of like all of the social, political and economic orders that run headlong into the technological and philosophical realities of a modern economy. Um, and so I think that's what makes Germany such an interesting co uh, country to play. Japan also, because Japan is that plus even more because like it has giga feudalism like look look how long it's taken us just to get a little bit of reform like we haven't even gotten rid of serfdom we're still a monarchy it's taken us uh 20 years just to do some fairly like i would say they're actually fairly revolutionary reforms but it's taken us 20 years to erode the shogunat by about 10 percent of their clout now in fairness we have doubled the power of the intelligentsia so you know it's just, it takes time. You always love to see this. We are starting to produce an awful lot of tickets in the economy. And the nice thing is, producing tickets consumes uh, these engines, which are relatively cheap. Oh my God, dude, I actually got the high roll of high rolls. Now there is a little bit of a um, cheese you can do. You could just like save and re-roll over and like, and reload to like get the dice roll to go your way. I kind of find it's more fun if you actually go with the dice rolls. You know, if you're going to save and just, you know, Activate the console. I don't know how to do it in Victoria 3, but like just activate console and cheat. You know what I mean? Like there's no point reloading. I mean, I guess you can technically, but I don't think there's really a point. But we have now abolished serfdom. So this is going to cause sweeping, massive changes to our economy for a number of reasons. One of the biggest ones is now food is actually scarce because there is no longer a massive amount of people who are tied to producing only food. There you go. The food economy just readjusted and now food is a lot more scarce than it used to be. And that is because if we come down here to our arable land, there's no longer serfdom being activated in here, allowing these buildings to produce a lot more food. However, all these other resources are being produced in more of an abundance. I'm pretty sure like a lot of these other buildings, uh, a lot of these other goods are, are now being produced a little bit more. I think that's how that works. But I'm pretty sure serfdom makes your arable land less efficient. However, as a consequence, that will make your other buildings more efficient and more powerful. So this arms industry is broke. We are going to activate it and make it happy by coming down here to my barracks and activating line infantry. This will cost me about two and a half grand a month. Also, by the way, our, ta our tax revenue and all sorts of stuff just got really, really expensive for a number of reasons that we can talk about. Namely that, you know, quality of life just increased, all that sort of stuff. Serfdom is a huge sleeping change, so I'm glad we have a lot of money in the bank to kind of live through that change. But yeah, I'm going to activate line infantry. This will activate the um, demand for weapons which will allow my arms industry to actually be profitable. So now you should see, yeah, now it's profitable. So that's excellent. However, I am essentially subsidizing this factory, which is another expense that my government has to pay. Now, on a short-term basis, uh, the abolishment of serfdom will hurt my economy, um, but we do have what we need here. We are going to start taxing services to make up for that. That will further lower the quality of life of my population, but I'm willing to accept that. 
in the name of not going into bankruptcy. Now, it is inefficient to have a big gold reserve like this because technically that should be money that's flowing around my economy, but I'm willing to live with that. So are there any other laws that we could get through? We could further disenfranchise the landed class by getting through wealth voting. Let me have a little bit of a think about that. So isolationism, it would be good to maybe move. Mercantilism is the least hated. 14% chance. Only the industrialists really like that. I'm trying to think, what could I spend my political power on that we just got? Nobody really likes open borders. I don't need poor laws. It would be good to get schools. Yeah, private schools. There you go. That's the thing I'm going to spend my political capital on. Do I want private or public schools? So public schools will increase education access and assimilation. This could be good if we long term wanted to go to multiculturalism, but I think we're going to do private schools, which will just slightly increase the education access here. It's just it's just going to be easier to pass, right? 35. Well, yeah, I'm going to go for private schools for because private schools will make it so that the intelligentsia is more powerful and it'll make it so that they're happier long term. So private schools it is. So I had to think about that one for a little while about what exactly I wanted to do. We're getting our second motor industry and a bunch of railways coming. Okay, this is a huge moment. We just got modern sewage. So we can now go to another five levels of construction sector. And we're getting more base infrastructure from our population, which means we have a lot more room to start building. Let's get those five construction sectors online. Our, con our ability to construct is getting out of hand. Like we're getting so much potential right now. And you can see as we improve our economy, as we got rid of serfdom, we are getting less radicals and now we're getting more loyalists. So people are happy with the changes to the economy. Um, one big problem we have is our authority is pretty low. So we're going to have to start maybe stop boosting some of these political parties. But that might be on a longer term basis. Also, abolishing serfdom has severely weakened um, the shogunate, which is just straight up great for us. Oh, wow. Uh, we just got central banking, but that's not why I said, oh, wow, that extra 10% minting will be handy. Um, my economy just went into massive deficit and that's because I increased my construction good consumption. That's fine. There is a huge rebellion here. It's a massive peasant revolt in the East India Company. Like, I, I, insane. Huge. Like, game, like, computer destroying, like, my graphics card just went up like five degrees of temperature based on this rebellion. Interesting. So India is having a little bit of unrest. Potentially that could open up opportunities for me to start conquering little Indian miners. You never know. Uh, those minor nations are, are totally open to, to conquest. Let's continue to push on the social technology front. It would be really nice to potentially push towards quinine. This would allow me to um, colonize areas with malaria more easily. It would also be really nice to head towards mutual funds. This will allow me to increase the total number of capitalists in my country by a massive amount by allowing a lot of my industries to be publicly traded on the open stock exchange, which is a production method you can do for your industries. Yeah, so a major problem is our wood price is super high. So I think I'm going to prioritize getting a little bit more wood production in a few key places. Places. We're just burning cash at too unsustainable a rate with this level of construction goods. But yeah, look at that quality of life jump from getting surfed, rid of serfdom. It's just so much better for your people. At least I think that's what's causing that. I hope, I hope it is. So one huge problem I have is luxury goods are like stupidly expensive in my country and I need to like look into a way to solve that. It's probably going to be building furniture and clothing factories. I've just been so focused on building up the industrial capacity of my nation and like the lower classes that I haven't really paid attention to luxury goods, which are like pretty reasonably good at increasing the GDP as well. Yeah, right now my goal is to massively increase my wood production because shit is getting expensive here. Okay, this is actually pretty big. We just passed private schools, um, although it's at a really bad time when my tax waste is really, really high. Okay, I'm going to have to do a little bit more taxing. I'm going to tax T. That'll get me 5k. Each one of these is worth 65 bureaucracy, which means I need to build five of them. One, two, three, four, five. Um, I'm going to temporarily go up to maximum tax rate. Very, very temporarily until I can stabilize my economy. I'm going to start wanting to go back down to a normal economic level because this is going to cripple the standard of living in my country, which I really don't want because it's going to radicalize my population. So once we stabilize our tax system and stuff like that, we just want to start bringing that back down. Um, because the big problem with being sitting at the maximum tax level is you have no more tools to increase your government revenue, right? So you ideally, you want to sit here, right? This is a good place to sit or here or here, right? All three of these are totally valid places to sit when it comes to like government revenue, but you never want to be sitting here um, because I cannot click any more taxes, which means if I get unexpected expenses, I'm in a bad place. And also heavily taxing my population like this is actually hurting my GDP. At least I'm pretty sure it is. We are officially, however, the eighth biggest economy in the world, um, which is a really good position to be in, whilst simultaneously we are the sixth most populous country in the world. What the hell happened to Prussia? Oh, God. Prussian aristocratic revolt. Oh, Prussia. <laughs> Prussia's got major problems, dude. <laughs> oh, there's been a Bulgarian uprising, too. 
in the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire is just having a really bad day. A lot of rebellions in Europe. Two Sicilies? I don't think Italy's any close to being formed. East India Company looks like it beat the peasant revolt, potentially. Okay, okay, we got the tax situation under control. We can now decrease taxes. Just a scooch. We want to get our gold reserves down. We need to get that money back into the economy. But you can see, I've been focusing so much on increasing the capacity of my economy that the expensiveness of goods has just massively gone up. And everything being expensive is bad because it means uh, people can't buy enough of what they need. So I'm going to have to make a significant push to probably especially improve my clothing industry. But right now I need to make construction goods cheaper because things are just rough right now. Yeah, I may have to delay any military conquests. I was considering going for some sort of military action in 1860. I'm going to have to delay that potentially to 1865 while I get my economy in order. I think that's just roughly how long it's going to take me. So it would be really nice if we could go to per capita taxation. You could see here, this would give us an extra 17k in tax revenue. It would significantly lower the land tax while significantly raising a per capita and income tax. So this would be a nice advancement in our ability to extract a larger percentage of people's income and consumption. Like going down to medium tax level would only be a small decrease compared to a medium level on this economic system is nearly 21k. Proportional taxation would be really, really nice because this actually has a, um, a dividends tax rate, which taxes the upper classes and they tend to make the most money. We've unlocked nationalism, which can allow us to pass ethnostate, which is useful if you're going to go for a high authority run, um, where basically you just, you know, you want to basically role play fascism, which is a, a valid way to play the game, right? Because um, the mechanical advantage of having a lot of authority is, uh, allows you to control the political system of your country much more. I, I personally think that going for multiculturalism is more powerful from a gameplay standpoint because it increases the amount of immigration people do to your country. Um, let's go ahead and grab realism for that 5% extra prestige and it'll also lead to arts academies and all that sort of jazz. So one issue we're running into is we're not able to bring down the price of wood very quickly. The price of construction goods is not going down very fast, but we will get it to come down. We want to bring down the price of construction goods because if construction goods are cheap, it means we can build on, we can build at a deficit for longer, which means we'll be able to begin the parabolic upward curve, get that going faster. Speaking of parabolic upward curve, look at the curve, baby. Line goes up. Honestly, this is line goes up the video game, like just 100%. It is the most fun game if you just like stonks. <laughs> Dude, apparently the Buddhist monks are so angry that I have private schools that they want there to be no schools in the country. <laughs> it's like, no education, screw you guys. I don't want people to learn. You know, I could kick out the Imperial Rule Party. This would increase radicalism in my country, but it would give me plus 1% legitimacy. And I don't really need them for anything. So let's go ahead and kick them out so they can form their Imperial Rule Party. Now, they're pretty angry because of the abolishment of serfdom. If they do... Ah, okay. Active journey journal empty. So I need to get the Shogunate below 20% power for 10 years. And this will activate the Inari Restoration, which I think will essentially be the Meiji Restoration. But, you know, in this timeline, right? This is an alternate timeline. This game doesn't exactly follow the rules of history. It is what, what I would consider plausible alt history. Hawaii wants to enter into an alliance with us. Now, that's an interesting proposition. Instead... I'm going to conquer Hawaii. Um, so in order to conquer Hawaii, we're going to need a couple of things. We'll need two extra shipyards. Sorry, not in here though. Um, we'll need two extra shipyards. And these shipyards will be set to produce military ships. And then we will want to build, I think, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. Each one of these consumes two mana wars. Each shipyard produces 15 mana wars. Yeah, so we could very easily do two naval bases and two fully built naval bases uh, at level 20 will give me 20 fleets to play with and also uh, two maximum declared interests which will allow me to project more power around the world and it will also give me naval power projection uh, improve increase the size of my military at the cost of you know it'll have a little bit of a government expense but that'll be you know we'll build up our naval let's make sure the logging camps get done first and the railways yeah Let's deprioritize the shipyard slightly. Uh, looks like there is a revolution brewing. Yeah, it looks like the Shogunate are not willing to stand down on per capita taxation. The radicalism is critical. Revolution progress. So yes, they do have enough radicalism to go to maximum thingy. So I'm not yet ready to defeat the Shoguns. Um, so I'm going to have to back down on this. 94 days. Yeah, I would need more time. So I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to let the shoguns cool down. They're super, super unhappy. So we just have to let this 
um, unhappiness tick away for a while before we can start doing more reforms. And we also have to let the power of the shoguns tick away for a while before we can do more reforms. I would really like to beat them in a revolution. That would be really, really cool because that would essentially knock them out of political system for a very long time. You know what? I've changed my mind on con conquering Hawaii. I'm going to like cancel those naval bases for now and I'm going to focus on improving my market economy. That's, it's been severely neglected. So I queued up a ton of tobacco plantations because tobacco is in relatively high demand in my economy. It's consumed by most pops as an intoxicant need, right? Liquor, tobacco, opium, these are all intoxicants. My population are hungry for them. They're relatively expensive, so this will be a good way to increase the GDP of my nation while also increasing the quality of life of my people. Well, technically, quality of life doesn't maybe necessarily measure health. It more measures how good, how much can people buy the stuff that they want, even if that stuff technically lowers the quality of their life <laughs> like cigarettes and tobacco uh, and alcohol all that jazz but hey at least the country will profit from it okay so we have unlocked realism that's perfect five percent more prestige the peasants are upset so they can stay upset peasants are slowly getting upset and radical so what things are still empowering the shoguns in my country let's have a look here monarchy hereditary bureaucrats maybe we could change hereditary bureaucrats appointed bureaucrats would increase the intelligentsia so let's have a quick Unlocks hereditary okay and professional. Let's have a look at the government administration of my country real quick. Uh, I see. So actually, this would allow me to also disempower a lot of aristocrats and to empower the bureaucrats in my country uh, by being able to switch to professional bureaucrats. So this could be a great way to get the intelligentsia more entrenched. How radicalized would this make my faction? So the shogunate will radicalize for sure, but they will be the only ones to radicalize. So I might be able to go to appointed bureaucrats. Elected bureaucrats would radicalize them even more. And this would be really nice because it would make my institutions much cheaper. But I think 25% more taxation capacity seems like a good compromise. We're going to head towards appointed bureaucrats. That's going to be a good step forward for our country. All right, cool. So we just unlocked intensive agriculture. This is going to give us access to two really important things. First of all, it's going to allow us to start using fertilizer in our farms to um, increase yields. It's also going to allow us to build chemical plants, which can produce fertilizer and explosives, which will thus continue to increase the complexity of our resource chains. Most importantly, though, it will allow intensive grazing, which will allow our grazing areas. Oh my God, what are they called? Livestock ranches to consume grain, which will in turn produce fertilizer. And then we can use that fertilizer to enrich our farms. So the production chain between these two buildings has got more complicated uh, and thus the GDP of my nation should take a fairly significant jump here. Yeah, look at that. That's beautiful. A nice, happy place to be just rapidly increasing. We should also see this reflected in the price of these goods, right? Yeah, grain. Grain is being produced in higher quantities, which means the price just came down. I remember these prices actually affect our pops because if we come here, we can see that 30% of our uh, poor people's expenditure is on grain. So the grain price really heavily affects our population. So we should probably start looking into bringing the grain price down. But also now fertilizer is a good that previously wasn't being consumed in my country is now being consumed. And it just means all of the existing buildings are now more productive. So just really, 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 really great stuff. Okay, the shoguns are just too radical right now for me to be able to pass reforms. So I'm going to have to cancel my law changes. I don't feel ready to fight off a rebellion. Let me have a little think about that. Yeah, they'd peel off too much of my army. I wouldn't be able to fight that rebellion. So I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to cancel this reform and maybe go for a less contentious reform. So we will head down towards cultural exclusion. Basically, this is a scale going from like most racist to least racist, essentially. Um, so national supremacy is like a step below ethnostate. Racial segregation is a step below national supremacy. And each of them will affect how the populations in your country are affected. For example, ethnostates means in order for a culture to be accepted in your country, they just, they have to be a primary culture, but it gives you a lot of authority to play around with. Multiculturalism, on the other hand, uh, says that everyone is always an accepted culture in your country. However, you get no authority from this. And then the degree to which you culturally exclude people is how much authority you get. So like right now, national supremacy, cultures are accepted if they share a heritage culture trait with any primary cultures in this country, or they share a cultural trait, which is not a heritage culture trait with any primary cultures, e.g. Japanese. So like if I go and I take a look at the population here. Yeah, like if we take a look at this Han pop, Han is being discriminated against in Japan because it doesn't share um, any cultural traits with the Japanese shogunate because it's of an East Asian heritage, it's in the Sinosphere, it's Han Chinese, right? Um, but I'm pretty sure this right here is a cultural trait, right? Cultural trait, cultural trait, cultural trait. 
the, it has the East Asian heritage. So if we were to go to, I believe it is cultural exclusion, this will allow cult, uh, Han Chinese to be accepted in Japan. Whereas I believe racial segregation might not be. It's hard. I don't fully understand it, but I think going for cultural exclusion would be a significant liberalization of our laws, which will potentially have more diverse cultures maybe move into our country, which could be helpful. I don't really know. Our cash flow situation is pretty bad. I may have to go back up to maximum budget, but I will wait until I'm actually running out of gold reserves. This is like a last resort button. I don't want to press this unless I have to. Now, it's entirely possible for you to get the economy to manage itself if you just click on these things. Certain buildings have the ability to click the auto expand button. Let me see here. Yeah, auto expand. And basically, if the state has reasonable market access, if it has reasonable cash reserves and the construction queue is relatively short, it will just automatically expand profitable buildings in your empire. So you don't have to micromanage everything. But in my opinion, trying to like micromanage every single little aspect of the country is like a lot of the fun for me. It looks like another revolution is happening here. The Buddhist monks are revolting. However, I think I can handle the Buddhist monks because they're going to revolt in Kanto and Chubu, which means I will have be able to preserve the majority of the army, which will allow me to disenfranchise the church and the petty bourgeoisie out of the country. Um, so I think I could very easily beat this revolution. Now, a revolution is a very, very painful event. It's going to hurt our country for a very long time. So I'm going to preemptively go up to maximum taxation so that we have the coffers to survive through. Um, I do have an advanced military here. Yes, where's my arms industry? Okay, it's in the right state. These guys are in the correct thing. They're fully trained. That's right. I would love to have given them artillery because this would have given them a lot more offense and defense. Fortunately, I just can't afford artillery, I guess. Nah, there's no point in preemptively building arms industries. We just continue along the pathway. We're building tobacco plantations. So this is going to be a massive disruption to our economy. Let's have a little bit of a think about whether or not we want to do this. Why are they opposing this? You know, I think revolutions are too dangerous. I'm going to cancel this. I'm just going to let things cool off. It's, it's a huge hit to your GDP. I'm not prepared to deal with a revolution, essentially, because I haven't built my giga army in the capital. It's something we will work towards, but I'm not quite ready. Ah, perfect. So gold fields have been depleted in Hokkaido, which means cheap, easy gold access has been depleted here. But now we can build gold mines and gold mines are really, really powerful because they produce gold, which is an incredibly valuable resource that is automatically sold to an invisible market, which makes the pops working in the mine really rich. But it also produces minting. That is money that directly goes into my coffers that I can then spend on the economy. Um, so we are going to immediately max out and build all those gold mines and then immediately also make it so that these gold mines are using atmospheric engine pumps because the per level boost here is just so good. 10 extra gold, 1000 extra minting. Let's go baby. So the amount of gold that will be generated here, this should also then perhaps... Mm, yeah, I'm going to have to stop bolstering the industrialists. That will lower their political power, but that will free up authority. And then I can use authority to pass a greener grass campaign in Hokkaido, which will hopefully increase the migration att attraction. Um, and once these gold mines start completing the quality of life of the people here because of their economic power from essentially printing money um, with a gold mine will make it so that a lot of people want to move there. I wonder, has gold been found in South Island as well? No, damn. So unfortunately, the Imperial Rule Party won the election which means we need to bring them into the government in order to have any legitimacy. So let's do that. They're now in the government. This is going to give them a huge amount of political power. Do you think we could maybe scooch in? No, this would radicalize the shoguns. We could move down to racial segregation. It's a slight liberalization of our laws. It's easier to pass, less controversial. Now we could go for appointed bureaucrats, actually. This is less likely to radicalize the shogunate, and this will chip away at their political power. So that's a good step forward in our in our anti-shogunate crusade, well, not crusade, but like campaign that we're on. We've just unlocked pharmaceuticals, which will allow us to increase the size of our health system institution investment. Um, that's something we may wish to consider getting to work on now. Let's have a look here. Is that worth... Yeah, going up to level two health investment would be handy. It would take a little bit of bureaucracy. Oh, it'll also increase the power of the intelligentsia. So we want to go up to a higher education level. We want to upgrade most of these, actually. I'm going to let some of these tobacco plantations finished though before I start increasing my bureaucracy. Um, and I think I can go back down to a more stable tax level. I'm really, really looking forward to these gold mines being finished because it's going to make so much gold for us. Ooh, quinine. That's a good step forward. Yeah, 
we really do need to expand the bureaucracy. Like the bureaucracy needs to expand to meet the needs of the expanding bureaucracy. The first gold mines have begun to finish, which is allowing us to do an insane amount of extra minting. This is this right here. This is just, we're just minting cash, right? We're on the gold standard. So minting is big. Wow, my economy took a big dip. I wonder why my minting went down so much at some point. I wonder, hmm, what event happened there? Did I, was taxation a part of that maybe? Uh, maybe taxation hurt my GDP, which lowered my minting rate perhaps. Um, regardless, now we're directly minting gold into currency, which is, means just we have a lot more gold to spend on the economy. Um, that gold that we spend on the economy will get into the hands of our population. They'll start trading with each other. They'll start buying goods off each other and we get richer and richer and richer and richer. And eventually we might be able to lower our tax rates. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> we'll think about it. <laughs> So, appointed bureaucrats first event, uh, political discord, costs us a lot of money, but will lower the negative effects. Two years. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. I'll, I'll accept that cost. Um, we, we got a bad roll there, but we can, we can maybe do better. It's only 179 days between rolls, which is honestly really, really good. Our legitimacy must be amazing right now. Yeah, we got maxed out legitimacy. So, the stopping of the bolstering of the industrialists actually massively hurt them or maybe that was the election but yeah it's it's definitely hurting them that they're no longer getting as many votes as they should but we are getting closer and closer towards mutual funds which will allow us to massively increase the qu total quantity of capitalists in my country god just look at the total amount of minting that those gold mines are doing it's absurd how efficient these guys are at generating not only gdp right revenue for the people who work here but also just cash flow for the government so the samurai are upset. Um, what's their current happiness? They're at neutral. The industrialists are already super happy. So I think I would rather upset the samurai slightly and lower their political power so that that political power can be put into other um, political groups. But yeah, we're finally getting around to building these tobacco plantations. Um, and that should see the price of tobacco start to fall rapidly. Right now, clothing is the biggest concern for my people though. They really want clothing and I am the kind of leader who will provide. So textile mills will consume fabric, dye, and silk. Let me double check. So silk is actually in pretty good shape. So we'll get started on five textile mill factories, which means we will need to do a little bit of silk production. And we also need to increase the production of the resources that feed in, like silk, life, uh, silk cloth, and dyes. We now have access to smooth bores, so we can produce more artillery. That would be dead handy. Um, we're not yet ready to do any military adventures. We're in the quest for massive GDP growth right now. So as you can see, as the price and quantity of the tobacco that we are producing in the market goes down, the amount of pops that will demand that as a good goes up. You can see five more units of it was purchased because the price is reaching a point where it becomes more affordable for people. So that's what we need to do. We need to bring the price down to plus or minus 3% to percent, 3% so that people could afford to buy more, which will increase their quality of life, which will increase our population, increase our economy, yada yada yada. So apparently Great Ching has been arming the natives against me. Uh, colonial de-escalation wouldn't be the worst thing in all honesty. So I, I'll be happy with slightly slower colonial growth. That's fine. There we go. We have unlocked quinine. This will reduce the malaria penalty. And it means we can start colonizing some places over here rather efficiently. Uh, but we don't have the declared interest. But the big thing it means is I'm pretty sure there's a... Mal yeah, the malaria trait is over here. So we should start colonizing Kenya even faster. Where is our next step? Organized sports. So just a 10% prestige boost across our country. Hell yeah. Ooh, man, we are rolling poorly here. Yeah, I may just have to give up on this. The success, we've rolled two really bad rolls here. I'll give it one more go and then we'll just cancel trying to enact it and we'll go for something else. One thing we should consider is perhaps producing lead um, so that we can make crystal glass. We would need 175 lead. So how much lead can we make per mine? With an atmospheric engine pump, is it really 20 lead per pump? Hold on. No, it's 40. So I would need five mines to sustain this reasonably. I could get away with four. I'll do five. I'll make five. Cash flow is perfect right now. We're slowly decelerating down to the exact point we get. Here, what is this? Hawaiian peasant revolt targeting Hawaii. Okay, sure thing, dude. Um, so we're slowly coming down to the landing point of zero gold reserves, which is exactly how we want to do. We want to like build up a little bit of a gold reserve and then spend, 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 spend down to our, you know, the fact that we have no money in the bank. That way we can massively increase the GDP. Yeah, the demand for clothing is actually just only increasing. So I think clothing is going to be like a major, major hurdle for my, for my people. So we can hurt the Shogunate 
we can boost the intelligentsia or we can just get 20% more enactment. I just really need this to be enacted. So that 20% basically erases all the negative events we had. So I'm pretty sure the Shogun was managed to be ousted in 1960, 1868. Um, so we're a little bit behind schedule because I don't think I'm anywhere near ready to get rid of them. It's mainly just down to the fact that I've been a little bit unlucky with my political situation. Um, I do think, though, that we have very effectively managed to erode the power of the um, Shoguns. They're like, as the price of these clothes come down, just the number of buy orders starts to increase because clothes become slightly more affordable and people just want more of them. Like clothing is just so in demand right now. It's insane. OK, cool. So we managed to do the atmospheric engine. That was basically an event to make sure that the atmospheric engine is being used in a bunch of different things. This will give us we could get throughput here. I think I would rather get tech. Tech is the thing that we need to catch up because that's where Japan is in the weakest throughout the early game. So just getting free technology towards it as uh, our research is nice. 10% extra prestige. Now, our current rank is actually limited due to the fact that we are not recognized by any of the old great powers. So in order for us to become recognized, we will need to um, to essentially start a war with another great power. So that'll be something we might look to. I think Russia might be our target for that. Um, but an extra 10% prestige puts us higher up on the list and we can continue to develop our society technology. Let's go ahead and take psychiatry. This will lower the bureaucracy cost of our population as well as increase our diplomatic influence. I haven't really used much diplomatic influence yet. So we could severely weaken the Shogunate and severely strengthen the Intelligentsia and get a 10% boost, or we could get a 15% boost. I think I'm going to go for the boost. We need to weaken the Shogunate because I think they're one of the main opponents to this. And thus, if we weaken them long term, we have uh, potential to oust them. It looks like some of my logging camps are having trouble with cash flow, partially just due to the fact that wages have increased so much. So one way you can help them out is to let them use rail transportation, which will actually lower the total employment, increase the cost of transportation, right? But by lowering the amount of people employed here, that will slightly increase the productivity. We also just got the water tube boiler, which is quite good. Um, the condensing pump engine, we're going to immediately activate in these gold mines, and we're also going to uh, expand these gold mines. This will allow them to use even more tools and more coal to produce even more gold and more minting. Big stonking cash flow. Tools have become overbearingly expensive for my lumber mills, which is making them start to go bankrupt, which is really, really bad. So I'm going to prioritize getting a couple of tooling workshops built, even though I really want to be finishing these gold mines. Um, the health of my economy is more important than the health of my coffers, because the health of my economy directly prints into my coffers. Oh, God damn it. So we're suffering defeat after defeat and trying to appoint bureaucrats, but I will continue to soldier on with this political reform. So it looks like Canada has been founded. It's a very ugly and strange Canada. The USA has yet to decide to uh, take over the West. It looks like we have New South Wales. They will eventually, I hope, uh, become Australia and potentially a conquest target for us if they break away from the UK. Um, the East India Company has not yet become the British Raj. Cape Colony is still quite small. The, the colonization of West Africa, though, is well underway. Yeah, Prussia... <laughs> Prussia is now half radical Prussia, half regular Prussia. Also, I think Austria, Austria is looking real thick, taking a huge bite out of Bavaria. Um, the Ottoman Empire is still looking incredibly sick. And I don't mean that in, like, the radical, you're looking awesome, dude. I mean in, like, the, ugh, what the hell happened to the Ottomans kind of way. South America is looking all right. Argentina has managed to expand completely into the Mapuche territory. Um, I'm curious to see. So who has the biggest GDP in the world right now? Uh, Great Qui Great Qing, the East India Company, France. How has France's GDP come along? Yeah, they've they've actually grown r reasonably well. I would say that my growth trajectory is like a little bit better and will continue to get better over time. Yeah, there we go. All these places that we're losing cash now are moving back into profitability because we've brought the price of tools back down. You got to be careful about letting things get too expensive. Right now, my coal is really, really expensive. So I may go ahead and prioritize like a couple of coal mines. Oh, this is huge. So we just did appointed bureaucrats giving us 25% more taxation capacity, which means we can now take our time and go back down to a much more normal tax level, taking a huge burden off of our population, allowing them to grow their population faster. This is going to give us more intelligentsia political strength. Most importantly, it is going to erode the political strength of the Japanese shogunate, which has been our main goal for this entire series. It's just get rid of these goddamn shoguns. Get them out, okay? We don't want them anymore. They're, they're preventing us from reforming the Japanese empire. So we just unlocked psychiatry. That will significantly reduce the cost of bureaucracy. I need to deal with bureaucracy right now. Let's go ahead and research dialectics. This will increase our max education investment. I definitely need to sit down and just like boost all of these. I've just been so caught up in trying to 
deal with the economic problem. Like, this is just one of those games where you never have enough resources to do everything you need to do. So you have to kind of like prioritize and do a bit of triage. Yeah, I'm running into problems like I can't expand my bureaucracy too much because paper is really expensive, which will make my costs of my running my government go up. So like, this is what I'm talking about. Everything has just such an interconnected weave of really cool systems that you have to try and like surf on you're not really in control you're just kind of like doing what you can to get control of everything and you're making decisions and, uh, about long-term and short-term returns let's have a look at the shogun what is still providing with them benefits so it would be good to get rid of local police force and potentially monarchy although we might want to keep monarchy but if we get rid of local police force in exchange for something like dedicated police force that would be i think the nail in the coffin we need to oust the shoguns so let's have a look. Who's in favor of dedicated police force? The intelligentsia, the samurai, peasants, and the petty bourgeoisie. So I need to bring the samurai into government, I believe. Yeah, let's get the samurai in. This will lower my legitimacy, but will increase the percentage chance that we pass dedicated police force. So we've done a great deal of work to politically dismantle the shoguns. Now we need to do the society work. That is... Um, increasing the number of capitalists in the country, increasing the number of academics in the country, increasing the number of bureaucrats, uh, just dwarfing the aristocracy with the new bourgeoisie, the new, the nouveau riche or whatever. I don't know. But yeah, I think that is a relatively interesting place for us to stop off this playthrough. We're just about approaching the point. Um, probably after these textile mills, I'm going to start producing a military and looking to maybe start getting a couple of vassals, maybe conquer a little bit of territory here. Um, I'm going to call that the end of the episode, though. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.